Okay, today's topic is Earth's history. The phylogenetic tree of all living things is a history of cell-based life. Cells may evolve and change, but new cells always arise from existing cells. How then did the first cells originate? Using models thought to approximate the conditions found on early Earth, scientists attempt to reconstruct the processes that gave rise to the first cellular life. So if new cells come from existing cells as per the cell theory, how did the first cells come to exist? Computer models of the sun suggest that five billion years ago, our solar system was a mass of gas and dust. You should remember this from the solar nebula theory from astronomy and how our solar system was formed. Anyway, most of the matter collapsed and formed the sun, but Earth took 400 million years to form from matter colliding in space, like you see in this animation. This didn't actually happen, it's just an animation. This added to Earth's mass and of course released lots of energy. And you can possibly imagine if you have two giant bodies like this smashing into each other, uh, it's kind of hot, so it melted the surface of the Earth. They estimate the Earth between four and four and a half billion years old. That is 700,000 times older than recorded human history and 50 million times longer than one human lifespan. Lifespan, not span, span. We can estimate the age of the Earth and what happened by studying the layers in the Earth's crust. So you can see here um, all of the different eons. You have the tertiary. Uh, the Upper Cretaceous, Lower Cretaceous, blah, blah, blah. The Jurassic, of course, we know that from Jurassic Park where the dinosaurs roamed around and so on. So the further down we go, the further back in time we go. But estimating Earth's age was not accurate until the 20th century, which was the 1900s. We use a process called radioactive dating, which is not what you see there. These are methods of establishing the age of materials. If you remember that atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus, remember that all atoms of the same element have the same number of protons, but we do have isotopes, which have the number of neutrons, which can vary. Yeah, what's it called? Isotopes. Uh, two very common radioactive isotopes that we use to date things are carbon-12 and carbon-14. So how do we actually figure out how old these are? This is done through radioactive decay. Some isotopes have unstable neutral, nu oh. some isotopes have unstable nuclei and release particles, energy, or both particles and energy. These are called radioactive isotopes. The rate of decay for these different isotopes has been determined. So we have something called Half-life, it is the amount of time it takes for one half of any size sample to decay. It could be less than a second or up to billions of years. It depends on the isotope. So we can age material by measuring the amounts of radioactive isotope it contains and compare that to its half-life. So this quantity is compared with the, an amount of another substance in a fossil that remains constant. I'll try to upload that because my speakers are blown, which is why I'm using my headphones. Okay, so uh, we can tell how old things are by using different kinds of isotopes. If we think that um, something is millions of years old, we're not going to use an isotope that has a half-life of a day. That would make no sense you would use something that has a, high, a half life of millions of years and so on. So all elements in organic compounds have existed since the formation of Earth. Now we use Operin's hypothesis to describe the early atmosphere that it contained ammonia, hydrogen gas, water, and hydrocarbons like methane. All of these things um, were around because things like smash into each other. At high temperatures, these gases might have formed simple 
organic compounds like amino acids. When Earth cooled and the water condensed to form the lakes and the seas, these amino acids then collected in the water. Over time, fueled by the energy from radiation and lightning, many chemical reactions might have made proteins. The Miller-Urey apparatus tested Operin's hypothesis. And again, can't, I'll upload the video because you can't hear that. There are new hypotheses, however, as to the formation of the first uh, cells. Some new hypotheses suggest that early atmosphere composed, was composed of carbon dioxide, nitrogen gas, and water. Experiments show that carbon dioxide and oxygen inhibit the production of organic compounds. So this probably happened in underwater hot springs away from the atmosphere. Another hypothesis is that a broad mixture of organic compounds were brought to Earth in the form of meteorites. So we have different hypotheses which can explain how some of the original organic compounds could form, but how do we go from organic compounds to actual cells? Cell-like structures form from solutions of simple organic compounds in the lab. These structures include something called microspheres. Microspheres are composed of many lipids and protein molecules that are organized as a membrane. Now we're actually starting to look like a cell. So you've got simple organic compounds, which you can, under certain conditions, create lipid and protein membranes, starting to sound like the cell membrane. You also have structures called coacerbates. These are collections of droplets composed of molecules of different types, like amino acids and sugars. Both microspheres and coacervates can spontaneously form under certain conditions. And both of these structures have the ability to take up substances from their surrounding. Coacervates can even grow, and microspheres can bud to form smaller microspheres. So these are all pieces of evidence to start to put together the story of how life started on Earth. 